What's up, everybody? So there is great controversy within the show The Chosen, right? Now, I don't really watch The Chosen. I don't like watching things like that. Um, We'll leave that. In a, we'll leave that for 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 another comment in a little bit. Um, but the chosen just dropped one of their trailers or a trailer for season three, supposedly, of the show, the chosen. Now there is controversy in that trailer. A lot of people are thinking or, or claim that the chosen showed their true colors colors because they quoted the Book of Mormon. Right now, I'm not a you know I. I don't believe that Mormonism is true religion, that the true, the you know, true Christianity or the true way of life. I don't believe that Mormonism is from God. I don't believe that. Um, you know, no disrespect to them or whatever. They can believe whatever they want to believe. But for me, in my opinion, re just reading the Bible, uh, you know, and comparing it to their beliefs, I don't believe that Mormonism is from God. Now, in the trailer, The Chosen, uh, there is one instance where the Jesus in that show says, I am the law of Moses. And a lot of people are, are, are taking this and they're saying, look, this is from the Book of Mormon. And in the Book of Mormon, and I'm going to show you guys uh, where it says in the Book of Mormon uh, in the you know, description below or in the comment section below, um, where Jesus does claim to be the law. He says, I am the law. He doesn't say, I am the law of Moses, but he does say, I am the law. And now, a lot of people on YouTube, Christian YouTubers everywhere are saying, hey, look, this is not biblical. Jesus didn't actually say this. That's actually not true. Jesus actually did say that he is the law. He said it indirectly. Remember, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. In Psalm 119, verse 142, it says, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Thy law is truth. Thy law is truth. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if Jesus says, I am the truth, and the law is truth, then Jesus is claiming to be the law, because the law is the transcript of his character. The law is his character. That's who he is. It even says in the Bible that God is love. That's, that's 1 John 4 and verse 8. And love is the fulfilling of the law, says Romans. So you can, you can point um, in multiple places where you can say that Jesus Christ indirectly says that he is the law. I am the truth. I am the law. Now, Jesus did not say that he is the law of Moses. Biblically, he didn't he didn't directly say, I am the law of Moses, but you can even make a case for that. You can make a case that he did fulfill the law of Moses. Now, the law of Moses being the core, the core thing of the law of Moses is the sacrificial laws, the feast days and all these things. Jesus did fulfill those law, those laws. Jesus did fulfill. So you can make a case that Jesus is the law of Moses. You can make it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say that, but you can make a case for it. So it's not far from the truth, right? It's not far from the truth. You can say that Jesus did fulfill the law of Moses. Now, the law of Moses was written by Moses. The law of God, the Ten Commandments, was written by God. So there is a difference, right? There's a difference between the law of God and the law of Moses. And Daniel even says this, but we're not going to get into that. So did is that quote from that trailer, is it far from the truth? No, it's not. It's not far from the truth. Jesus is the law. You could even say that he is the law of Moses in some way, because in some sense, because he did fulfill the law of Moses. He is the lamb that was supposed to be sacrificed in the law of Moses. He is that lamb. He is that ox that is sacrificed in the law of Moses. He is that Passover lamb. He is the high priest of the day of atonement. Again, law of Moses, feast, feast days and all these things. He is the bread of the, if you go into the sanctuary, there's the table of show bread. He is that bread. Okay. And all that pertaining to the law of Moses. 
So you can make a case for that. Now, I say that to say this. Yes, we can say that uh, the, the trailer is, you know, fine or whatever. But, but, but there is a danger. Here's, here, here's what I'm going to say. Here's what I'm going to say. There is a danger in... Now, I'm not saying that everybody does this, but there is a danger in relying only on this show for your spiritual enlightenment or awakening. The Bible says to study to show yourselves approved unto God. We should be studying scripture daily. We should be eating bread daily. That bread is the word of God daily. Not watching shows. You guys shouldn't even be watching me daily. You should be. You should be more. You should be more eating the bread of life daily. And this is the reason why I told you guys a while ago. I don't really watch shows like this, and this is the reason why. You could be watching something, and they could mis misquote something, and it it it'll be drilled into your mind, and that could be a misquote. So it's better for us, I believe, to be in the book rather than on TV. That's all. Peace. Praise God always. See you guys next time. We cannot, we cannot afford to let the critical goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius slip out of our reach. And those impacts are getting worse and could potentially be irreversible. The debate over pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib is uh, quite a debate. You know, some people think they're, they're, they're pre-trib, they believe Jesus is coming before the tribulation, or he's coming in the middle of the tribulation, or he's coming at the end of the tribulation. We don't know for sure when Jesus will return, but God does give us several signs, several markers that we know that the end will be near. Many of those are seen in Matthew 24. We have things like wars, rumors of wars, um, pestilences and earthquakes and all these events. You know, there are a lot of dear Christians that are mixed up regarding the, um, the events, the chronology of the coming of the Lord. Uh, all Christians agree there's going to be a tribulation. You can't escape where Jesus says in Matthew 24, there's a time of trouble such as there never has been coming. Jesus is actually quoting Daniel chapter 12, where Daniel says in chapter 12, at that time Michael will stand up, the great prince that stands for the children of thy people and there will be a time of trouble such as there never has been, even under that same time. So they all agree there is this great tribulation that you read about. As you look at all the passages regarding the second coming, you realize these are things that you're going to be able to see. Every eye shall see him. The elements are melting with fervent heat. I, I don't know if you've ever been in a sauna. Um, we know it gets past 120, 130. You begin to feel it. And I, I don't know exactly what temperature elements begin to burn up, but I'm sure it's going to be quite hot. And so that's not something that you could sort of ignore. The Bible is clear that we are going to hear Jesus come back with a great sound of a trumpet. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verse 16, the Bible actually says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He's coming back shouting with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. So again, you don't see that in many of the ideology and, and, the, and the teachings of today uh, in modern Christianity. Most of them teach it's a secret silent event. But the Bible says when Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to be shouting in all of his power and glory. He's going to be excited to see his bride whom he has been separated from for so long.